Level 1. Physical Layer. The Cable Guy. Every level of OSI model understanding explained. Level 1. The Physical Layer Specialist. The Bottom of the Barrel. These are the people who think the entire internet is just cables and signals. They'll tell you they understand networking because they know Ethernet cables carry electricity and fiber optic cables use light. That's like saying you understand cooking because you know ovens get hot. Here's what the physical layer actually does. It's layer 1 of the OSI model, and its only job is converting your computer's digital data, those ones and zeros, into physical signals that can travel through cables or air electrical pulses through copper wire, light pulses through fiber optic, or radio waves through the air for Wi-Fi. Then on the receiving end, it converts those signals back into ones and zeros. That's it. No intelligence, no decision making, just pure conversion. Think of it like this. The physical layer is the delivery truck. It doesn't know what's in the packages. It doesn't know where they're going. It just carries the boxes from point A to point B. All the smart stuff, the addressing, the routing, the error checking, that happens in the six layers above it. Level 1 people will brag about knowing RJ45 connectors and network interface cards. Cool, you know the hardware, but you have zero concept of MAC addresses added by the data link layer, or IP addresses added by the network layer, or how TCP and the transport layer make sure your data arrives in the correct order. You just see cables and think that's the whole story. The brutal reality is this. When you load a website, the physical layer is working at both ends. Your computer's physical layer sends signals out, and the server's physical layer receives them and converts them back to bits. Then those bits travel up through all seven layers to become the web page you see. But if you're stuck at level one, you think the cable itself is magic. If you started learning the OSI model today, you'd surpass everyone at level one in about an hour. That's how basic this knowledge is. Level two, data link layer, the address book. Level two, the data link layer understander. Still in the lower tiers, but at least we're getting somewhere. These people know that raw signals aren't enough. They understand the data link layer sits right above the physical layer and adds actual structure to those bits. This layer takes the ones and zeros zeros from the physical layer and organizes them into frames. Think of frames like envelopes. They wrap your data up with important addressing information, so it knows where to go on the local network. Here's the key thing. Level 2 people understand that level 1 people don't. MAC addresses, media access control addresses. Every network card and every device has a unique MAC address burned into it at the factory. It's like a serial number for your network hardware. The data link layer uses these MAC addresses to make sure data gets to the right device on your local network. Let me break down how this actually works. When your computer wants to send data, the data link layer takes that data and wraps it in a frame. At the front of the frame, it adds the sender's MAC address and the receiver's MAC address. At the back, it adds error detection bits called a frame check sequence. This lets the receiving computer verify the data wasn't corrupted during transmission. If errors are detected, the frame gets thrown out and has to be resent. The data link layer also controls how devices access the network media. This is called media access control. On a shared network like old school Ethernet hubs, multiple devices might try to transmit at the same time, which causes collisions. The data link layer has protocols like CSMA slash CD that detect these collisions and tell devices to wait random amounts of time before trying again. Modern switches have mostly eliminated this problem, but the principle still matters. Now here's where level 2 people still fall short. They understand local network communication, but they have no idea how data moves between different networks. MAC addresses only work on your local network. Network. If you want to send data across the internet to a server in another country, MAC addresses are useless. That's where the network layer comes in. But we'll get to that. Level 2 understanding is decent for basic networking. You can troubleshoot why two computers on the same local network can't see each other. You understand switches and how they use MAC address tables to forward frames efficiently. But the moment data needs to leave your local network and travel across the internet, your knowledge hits a wall. These people love talking about Ethernet and Wi-Fi. And yeah, those are both data link layer technologies. Ethernet uses wired connections with MAC addresses and frames. Wi-Fi does the same thing, but over radio waves instead of cables. Different media, same layer, same concepts. But ask them how a frame becomes a packet, or how routing works, and they're lost. They're stuck thinking in terms of local networks, with no concept of the five layers above that actually make the internet function. Level 3. Network Layer. The Router Guy. Level 3. The Network Layer Specialist. Welcome to mid-tier understanding. This is where things start getting interesting. These people understand what separates a local network from the actual internet. The network layer is layer 3 of the OSI model, and it's responsible for logical addressing and routing. This is where IP addresses come into play. While MAC addresses get you around your local network, IP addresses let you communicate with any device anywhere on the internet. Here's the fundamental difference. The data link layer we just talked about handles communication within a single network. The network layer handles communication between different networks. That's huge. That's literally the difference between being able to 
email your coworker across the room versus emailing someone in Japan. Let me explain how this works. Every device on the internet has an IP address. Think of it like a mailing address for your house. The network layer takes your data and wraps it in a packet, which is different from the frame we talked about in layer 2. This packet includes the source IP address, your computer, and the destination IP address, the server you're trying to reach. Then it figures out the best path to get that packet from your network to the destination network. This is where routers come in. Routers are layer 3 devices. They sit between networks and make intelligent decisions about where to send packets. When a packet arrives at a router, the router looks at the destination IP address, checks its routing table to see which path leads toward that destination, and forwards the packet to the next router in line. This process repeats across multiple routers until the packet reaches its final destination. Level 3 people understand this entire routing process. They know about subnet masks that determine which part of an IP address represents the network and which part represents the specific device. They understand how routers use protocols like RIP, OSPF, and BGP to share routing information and build those routing tables. They can explain why your data might take a different path across the internet depending on network congestion or link failures. But here's where level 3 still falls short. They understand how packets get routed between networks, but they don't understand how data actually gets delivered reliably. The network layer is connectionless. It just sends packets out and hopes they arrive. There's no guarantee packets will arrive in order or even arrive at all. That's a problem the transport layer solves, but we'll get there. The network layer also handles packet fragmentation. If a packet is too large for a particular network link, the network layer can break it into smaller fragments, send them separately, and reassemble them at the destination level 3 people know this happens, but usually can't explain the details. This is solid, respectable knowledge. Network engineers operate at this level. You can configure routers, troubleshoot routing problems, and understand how the internet actually moves data between networks. But you're still missing the upper layers that handle reliability, sessions, and application-level communication. Not bad, just not complete. Level 4, Transport Layer, the Reliability Engineer. All right, up until this point, we've been building the foundation. Level 4, the Transport Layer Expert. This is where we start separating casual knowledge from actual expertise. These people understand that sending packets across the internet isn't enough. You need reliability. The Transport Layer, Layer 4 of the OSI model, is responsible for end-to-end -end communication and making sure your data actually arrives intact. This is where TCP and UDP live. Here's what makes Level 4 different. The three layers below, physical, data link, and network, they just move data. They don't care if it arrives correctly or in order the transport layer fixes that. It provides reliable data delivery, flow control, and error correction. Let me break down TCP transmission control protocol. This is the workhorse of the internet. When you load a web page, download a file, or send an email, you're using TCP, here's how it works. Before sending any data, TCP establishes a connection between your computer and the server. This is called the three-way handshake. Your computer says, I want to connect. The server says, okay, I'm ready. And your computer confirms, great, let's go. Only then does data transmission begin. TCP breaks your data into segments. Each segment gets a sequence number, so the receiving computer knows what order to reassemble them in. As segments arrive, the receiver sends back acknowledgments saying, I got segment one, I got segment two. If a segment doesn't arrive or arrives corrupted, the receiver doesn't send an acknowledgement and the sender automatically retransmits that segment. That's reliability. But TCP isn't the only option. There's also UDP, user datagram protocol. UDP is connectionless. It just fires data out out without establishing a connection, without checking if it arrived, without caring about order. So why would you ever use UDP? Speed, video streaming, online gaming, voice calls. These all use UDP because a few dropped packets don't matter. You'd rather have the video keep playing than pause while TCP retransmits every single lost packet. Level 4 people understand this trade-off. They know when to use TCP for reliability and when to use UDP for speed. They understand port numbers, which the transport layer uses to identify specific applications. HTTP HTTP uses port 80, HTTPS uses port 443, email uses port 25. Ports let multiple applications on the same computer use the network simultaneously without interfering with each other. The transport layer also handles flow control. If the sender is transmitting data faster than the receiver can process it, the receiver tells the sender to slow down. This prevents overwhelming slower devices. It also handles congestion control, detecting when the network is overloaded and reducing transmission.
transmission speed to prevent making it worse. But here's where even level 4 knowledge has limits. These people understand data transport, but they don't understand how sessions are managed, how data gets formatted for different applications, or what happens at the application layer itself. They know TCP delivers data reliably, but they can't explain how that data becomes an email or a web page. This is where serious IT professionals live. You understand protocols, you can troubleshoot connection problems, you know how reliable communication actually works, but you're still three layers away from complete mastery. Respectable, but not legendary. Level 5. Session Layer. The Connection Manager. Level 5. The Session Layer Specialist. Now we're getting into territory most people never reach. This is Layer 5 of the OSI model, and honestly, it's the most underappreciated layer. The Session Layer manages dialogues between computers. It establishes, maintains, and terminates sessions between applications. Think of it as the layer that keeps track of conversations. Here's why this matters. When you're video chatting with someone, you're not just sending one-way data, you're having a back-and-forth conversation. The session layer coordinates this. It establishes who talks when, manages turn-taking, and makes sure both sides of the conversation stay synchronized. Without it, communication would be chaos. The session layer creates checkpoints in data streams. Let's say you're downloading a massive file and your connection drops halfway through. The session layer has saved your place. When you reconnect, instead of starting from zero, you can resume right where you left off. That's session management in action. It also handles dialogue control. Some communications are half duplex, meaning data flows one direction at a time, like a walkie-talkie. Others are full duplex, meaning data flows both directions simultaneously, like a phone call. The session layer manages which mode you're using and coordinates the flow. Level 5 people understand authentication and authorization at the session level. When you log into a website, the session layer helps maintain that logged-in state across multiple page requests. It uses session tokens that prove you've already authenticated, so you don't have to log in again with every click. This is huge for web applications. But here's the controversial take. In modern networking, the session layer is often merged with other layers or handled by applications themselves. The strict OSI model separation doesn't always hold in real-world implementations. Level 5 people know this. They understand the conceptual purpose even when the practical implementation is blurred. The session layer also manages session termination gracefully. When you log out of an account or close a video call, the session layer properly closes that session and releases resources. Without this, you'd have zombie sessions consuming server resources forever. Here's where level 5 still falls short of complete mastery. They understand session management, but they don't fully grasp how data gets formatted and presented to applications. They know sessions exist, but they can't explain encryption, compression, or data translation. That's the next layer. This level is where protocol developers and advanced network architects operate. You understand the subtle coordination that makes complex communications possible. You're no longer thinking about individual packets or connections, you're thinking about entire conversations and workflows. Good knowledge, truly good, but we've still got two layers to go. Level 6, Presentation Layer, the Translator. Level 6, the Presentation Layer Master. And suddenly we're in rarefied air. This is where most network professionals tap out. The Presentation Layer, Layer 6 of the OSI model, is responsible for data formatting, encryption, and compression. Think of it as the translator and preprocessor. It takes data from the application layer and prepares it for transmission, or takes received data and formats it so applications can actually use it. Here's what makes this layer critical. Computers don't all speak the same language. One system might use ASCII character encoding. Another uses Unicode. One application sends data in JSON format. Another uses XML. The presentation layer handles these conversions. It's the universal translator that makes sure data sent by one system can be understood by another completely different system. Encryption happens at this layer. When you see that little padlock icon in your browser indicating a secure HTTPS connection, the presentation layer is encrypting your data before sending it and decrypting received data before passing it to the application. This is what keeps your passwords, credit card numbers, and private messages safe from eavesdroppers. SSL and TLS, the protocols that secure most internet traffic, operate at this layer. Compression also happens here. When you download a zip file or stream a video, the data is compressed to reduce bandwidth usage. The presentation layer on the sending side compresses the data, and the presentation layer on the receiving side decompresses it back to its original form. Without this, streaming video would consume 10 times more bandwidth, and the internet would crawl to a halt. Level 6 people understand data serialization. This is the process of converting complex data structures into a format that can be transmitted over a network and then reconstructed on the other end. When an application sends an object with multiple properties, the presentation layer serializes it into a byte stream, transmits it, and the receiving presentation layer deserializes it back into a usable object.
check. They also understand character encoding deeply. Why does your email sometimes show weird symbols instead of apostrophes? That's a presentation layer encoding mismatch. The sender used one character encoding scheme, and the receiver interpreted it with a different one. Level 6, people can diagnose and fix these problems. But here's where even level 6 falls just short of total mastery. They understand data formatting and preparation, but they don't fully understand the applications themselves. They know how to encrypt HTTP traffic, but they might not deeply understand how HTTP actually works. They know how to compress video data, but they might not know how video streaming protocols coordinate playback. The presentation layer is also responsible for data representation independence. This means applications don't need to worry about how data is stored or transmitted. The presentation layer abstracts all of that away. An application just sends and receives data in its native format, and the presentation layer handles all the messy conversion details. This is where security specialists and data architects operate. You understand encryption, compression, encoding, and data transformation at a level most people can't even imagine. You're the reason different systems can talk to each other seamlessly. Impressive. Truly impressive. But there's still one more layer. Level 7. Application layer. GOAT status. Level 7. The application layer expert. GOAT status. The absolute pinnacle of OSI model understanding. This is layer 7, the top of the OSI model, and it's where everything comes together. The application layer is what you actually interact with web browsers, email clients, file transfer programs, streaming services. Every piece of software you use to access the network operates at this layer. But here's the thing. Understanding the application layer means understanding all six layers beneath it. Level 7 people see the entire stack simultaneously. When you type a URL into your browser and hit enter, they understand the complete journey. The application layer processes your request using HTTP or HTTPS protocol. The presentation layer encrypts the data and formats it properly. The session layer establishes and maintains the connection to the web server. The transport layer breaks it into segments and uses TCP to ensure reliable delivery. The network layer adds IP addresses and routes packets across the internet. The data link layer frames the data with MAC addresses for local network delivery. And the physical layer converts everything to signals that travel through cables or air. Then the entire process reverses at the server. The application layer provides network services directly to end users. HTTP for web browsing, SMTP for sending email, PIOP3 and IMAP for receiving email, FTP for file transfers, DNS for translating domain names to IP addresses, DHCP for automatically assigning IP addresses to devices. These protocols define how applications communicate over networks. Level 7 experts understand protocol design. They know why HTTP is stateless, why DNS uses both UDP and TCP depending on the situation, why email requires multiple protocols working together. They can explain the security implications of each protocol and how modern versions have evolved to address vulnerabilities. They understand APIs and how applications interface with the network. When a mobile app pulls data from a server, the application layer defines the structure of that request and response REST APIs, GraphQL, WebSockets. All of these operate at layer 7. Level 7 people can design these systems from scratch. Scratch. Here's what separates GOAT tier from everyone else. These people don't just understand individual layers. They understand the entire philosophy behind the OSI model. They know it was created in 1984 by the International Organization for Standardization to enable communication between computers of different architectures. Before the OSI model, a Windows computer and a Mac couldn't reliably communicate. The seven-layer model provided a standardized framework that made the modern internet possible. They understand abstraction and encapsulation. Each layer treats the layers below it as a black box. The application layer doesn't need to know how routing works. It just trusts the network layer to handle it. This separation of concerns is what makes the internet scalable and maintainable. You can upgrade one layer without breaking the others. Level 7 people can troubleshoot problems at any layer. Website not loading? They can determine if it's a DNS issue at layer 7, a routing problem at layer 3, or a physical cable failure at layer 1. They work backwards through the stack systematically until they find the problem. They also understand how the OSI model relates to the TCP and IP model, which is what the internet actually uses in practice. TCP and IP has only four layers, collapsing some of the OSI layers together. But the OSI model remains the conceptual standard for understanding network architecture. This is where protocol designers, network architects, and the people who literally built the internet operate. They designed HTTP, they created email protocols, they developed the standards that billions of people use every single day without even knowing it. If you understand all seven layers of the OSI model, 
model and how they work together, congratulations. You're in the top 1% of people who actually know how network communication functions. You can build internet infrastructure from the ground up. You can design new protocols. You understand one of the most important technological frameworks in human history. This video right here? Yeah, prepare to be pissed off. Click it.